A victim of a gunshot wound to the head only has a 5% chance of survival. He's only got a 3% chance of having a good quality of life afterwards. So with those statistics, every single step Stedman barely takes is a miracle. But Stedman's a fighter. He's trying to take that miracle one step further. Yeah, I'm not no Stedman Bailey was born on November 11, 1990. Just like the last two players we covered in this series, Trent Richardson and Trey Mason, Stedman's a Florida boy. During his high school career, he caught 68 passes for 1,163 yards and 14 touchdowns. And as a senior, he was class 6A, first team, Allstate. In high school, Stedman was teammates with future NFL quarterback Geno Smith. And during their senior year in high school, they made it to the state semifinal before being put out. But it wasn't the last time they would be teammates, as Stedman and Geno teamed up again at West Virginia. Now, Geno did play some his freshman year, but he wasn't a day one starter. Stedman, on the other hand, made an immediate impact. He played in a total of 13 games and started nine of them. As a sophomore, Stedman had cultivated a close friendship with another future NFL player, Tavon Austin. Tavon was a junior at this point, and while he had definitely made an impact as a sophomore, 2011 would prove to be even better. As a duo, Stedman, Bailey, and Tavon Austin weren't big receivers. Stedman was 5'11", Tavon only 5'8". But despite their stature, defense is fierce. In 2011, the sophomore Stedman, Bailey, and the junior Tavon Austin combined for nearly 2,500 yards. They also combined for 20 touchdowns. With Stedman's 1,279 yards, Breaking the single season school record, he proved to be an absolute beast. At one point that year, he got on a roll, bro, had five consecutive games with 100 plus yards. Also a record. Stedman and Tavon's work ethic is legendary, and their hunger to get better only intensified the next season. Stedman put up a ridiculous 1,622 yards. Now remember the year prior, him and Tavon combined for 20 touchdowns. Well, this season, Stedman Bailey by himself had 25 receiving touchdowns, bro, alone. I'm telling you, this man was averaging 14 yards per catch. Tavon Austin was right behind him with 1,289 yards of his own with 12 receiving touchdowns. Now, don't forget, though, Tavon was a hound on special teams as well, and he actually went over 2,000 all-purpose yards for the second time in his career. So following the season, Stedman and Tavon would enter the NFL draft together. And amazingly, they ended up on the team together, St. Louis Rams. Tavon Austin went in the first round running a 4-3-40, and Stedman Bailey a couple rounds later in the third wasn't so shabby himself running a 4-4. On draft night, Stedman actually tweeted at former St. Louis Rams great wide receiver Torrey Holt. He expressed his gratitude to be a part of the Rams organization and publicly put Torrey on the spot to mentor him. <laughs> I mean, the tweet got a ton of attention. There's no way Torrey could say no after that. I mean, Stedman was just a good-spirited dude, man. However, just like the rest of us, he wasn't perfect. As a rookie in the NFL, he was only targeted 25 times. Of those 25, he came away with 17 catches for 226 yards. Following year, though, he was suspended for performance enhancement drugs. A source close to Stedman denied that he actually took performance enhancement drugs, and not a whole lot of details actually came out about it, but his four-game suspension was reduced to two games, which maybe suggests that maybe he unknowingly took something that was on the banned substance list. I'm not sure, but he ended up missing two games. Now that second year, he would go on to have a better season than his rookie year, as his targets doubled, so did his production. He went from 226 yards to 435 yards, and scored his first professional touchdown. He continued to be a big play threat, averaging 14 yards per catch, just like he did in college. His teammate and good friend Tavon Austin took care of a lot of the special teams return duties, but Stedman did get one punt return and he took it back for a 90 yard touchdown. While he wasn't having an impact on the offense that maybe he wanted, he did embrace his role on special team. Now, as I just mentioned, he only had that one punt return. He also had a couple kick returns, but where he was really making a huge impact on special teams is actually on kickoffs. In his first two seasons, Stedman had 10 tackles on kickoff with four forced fumbles. In 2014, Stedman Bailey, Tavon Austin, and a few more of the St. Louis Rams players participated in a protest before one of the Rams games. It was a simple gesture, 
hands up don't shoot this was in support of the michael brown incident that had taken place very close to where these guys now called home ferguson missouri while the st louis police somehow thought that the guy should be punished the nfl did not punish the players the crazy thing about this was just the very next year in 2015 Stedman wasn't off to a particularly good start and he was suspended again this time for violating the substance abuse policy in connection with marijuana after continuing to not make a huge impact on the field Stedman had a lapse in judgment made a bad decision faced consequences for it. while serving his suspension two days before thanksgiving Stedman was in a car with his cousin and two children when a light colored SUV pulled up across the street and after a few moments open fire. Vehicle occupied by Stedman, his cousin and the two kids was shot 30 plus times. Stedman and his cousin were able to shield the kids. Fortunately, the kids suffered no injury. Stedman's cousin, however, took 11 bullets. Stedman was hit twice, once in the hip, and one in the head. Or more accurately, it was, it was like right here. Unbelievably, these guys were able to drive themselves to the hospital after both clearly being in critical condition. Bro, amazingly, everybody in the car survived, including Stedman's cousin who took 11 shots. The bullet that hit Stedman in the head fractured his skull. And like I talked about at the beginning of this video, the survival rate is 5% but he survived. He had to get surgery to repair the bone over his eyebrow, but he was able to pull through. Now, Stedman received an outpour of support, not only from his teammates, but from players across the NFL. Now again, this happened two days before Thanksgiving. So he had to spend Thanksgiving day in the hospital bed, but he was still breathing. Two weeks after the incident, Stedman was walking. Let me remind you, only 3% of victims of gunshot wounds to the head ever experienced a good quality of life after the incident two weeks later he was walking let me say it again not long after that he was running he was lifting and he was trying to resume his nfl career however neurologists were not gonna clear him after the head trauma that he had experienced we all know what takes place on a football field and I know it sucks, but it's hard to imagine him being able to play football again. I mean, one bad hit could be fatal, and it's, yeah. Now, Stedman did get himself back into shape and had some workouts with former teammate Tavon Austin, former college teammate Geno Smith. And still to this day, Stedman hasn't given up on his dream to return to the NFL. Now, in the meantime, he's been taking care of his young son and his wife, going to church, and just living his life. He also spent time as a student coach at his alma mater, West Virginia, where he helped out with coaching and continued his degree, because remember, he left school after his junior year. The whole coaching thing actually started when he returned to the Rams after his gunshot wound. Remember earlier in the video, we talked about how proficient Stedman was on kickoff. Well, the Rams coaching staff had him help coach up some of the guys on the kickoff team. And that kind of helped lead to the West Virginia student assistant coach thing. So we'll see if that's something that Stedman wants to continue to pursue or if he finds other interest. Stedman is only 26 and thankfully has a lot of life left to live. I know he's eternally grateful to be alive, but at only 26, after having your career ended, it can be hard to find a new direction. But with that being said, after being shot in the head two days before Thanksgiving and walking two weeks later, Stedman has a ton to be thankful for. Yeah, you're not no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go.